discovery. Discovery is a term of art. It's a word that means what it sounds like. I get to discover what another party's claims or defenses are. If I'm the plaintiff, I want to discover from the defendant and others what they know about this case, what their defenses are, what they intend to do in response to my complaint. If I am a defendant, I have the right to know what the plaintiff bases his or her or its claims on. Who are the witnesses? What are the documents? Who are the people who were involved in supporting that claim? That concept is used most appropriately through the vehicle of discovery. Now, discovery has a bunch of subparts to it. Let's talk generally about the most common ones. There are interrogatories. Interrogatories are questions, written questions, that are supplied to the opposing party asking them for information. Please tell me who are all the witnesses that will support your claim that we breached the contract. Please tell me all the witnesses that will support or have knowledge about the receipt of the monies that were paid by the defendant. You could see how those are questions asking for information. Please list each and every document which you are using to support your claims that there was a breach of contract. If you're on the other side, a plaintiff might say, please give me a list of documents that you believe give you justification for not paying the money that was due under the contract. Please give me a name or names of the witnesses who you believe will support your defense that you did not have to pay for the footballs you received. You can see what I'm doing. I'm literally asking questions and the other side's required to respond to those questions. Those questions, generally in most systems, that is in most state and federal court systems, are numbered. In other words, I have 30 interrogatories, including subparts, that I can ask. I can't say, well, I have 25 interrogatories, but each interrogatory asks nine subquestions. That's what they mean by subparts. So 30 basic questions I'm allowed to ask. If I need to ask more, I have to request the court to grant me that right. That request, that permission that you're asking for, is done by the act of filing a motion for leave, a motion to request, a motion to permit you to ask more than 30 interrogatories. And then you have to explain why. Perhaps during the process of the litigation, you took some depositions and you found out new information that you didn't know before. And now you need to ask some written questions about it, but you've already asked your 30 questions. That might be an example of how you show the court that you should be entitled to get more interrogatories to ask. You can see that in the case of interrogatories, they are written questions that must be responded to by the opposing party. These are questions, interrogatories, that can only be used with parties. Almost all jurisdictions say that you cannot file written questions to a non-party in the form of an interrogatory. There are some creative vehicles where you can do a deposition upon written questions to a non-party, but for purposes of discovery and this discussion, generally speaking in interrogatories, they're directed to parties. The way that you respond to those interrogatories, and I use the word respond, not answer. Why? Because I can either answer those interrogatories or I can object to those interrogatories. And I have to address them one by one 
as they are asking me the questions. So if there are 10 questions, then I should have numbers one to 10 in my answers to interrogatories, and I should answer. Number one asks me for all the documents that I have in my possession that relate to this case. If you're responding to that request, well, you don't think you should have to prove or provide documents from you and your lawyer's communications. So you might say, here is a list of documents. There's 15 documents. And you say, but there are other documents which are protected by the attorney-client privilege. Or it might say, let's say the question was, please state what your lawyer told you in response to the complaint. Objection, attorney-client privilege. You can see how that works. So, or I can answer. For example, if the person said, please list all of the communications that you had, I could create a list and list every letter that I have that's not privileged that shows something related to the litigation or the cause of action. The way that you respond will speak to the plaintiff or the opposing party as to what your intentions are. If you're the defendant, you can ask interrogatories of the plaintiff. Please state each and every fact which supports your claim that there was a breach of contract. Please provide a list of every witness that you believe will support your claim that there's a breach of contract. You can see how I am going about asking questions that provide me with information. That will enable you to best discover, to best get information about the support for a particular party's position. 